transition into Moss Tell's question here. What if Claypool comes out to be the wide receiver one and Pickens has a solid year as number two? And we extend DJ, and he isn't even the favorite target, target regardless of skill. Okay, here's the thing. Here's my big thing when it comes to this entire argument. Why are we playing hypotheticals when it comes to Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool? But we can't play both sides. Why is it if Chase Claypool is the number one receiver and George Pickens is the number two and Deontay Johnson just suddenly sucks? Why can't it be, what if Chase Claypool has done exactly what he showed us, which is be a pretty average number two receiver at best, George Pickens proves to be the guy for the future, but you don't have to worry about George Pickens' contract for the next four years, so Deontay Johnson's contract doesn't mean anything at all when it comes to George Pickens, and Deontay Johnson continues to be the best wide receiver in Pittsburgh. What if all that happens? Then next year, Debo Samuels makes $30 million, and DK Metcalf makes $30 million, and then Deontay Johnson's value suddenly goes from $20 million to $25 million. Why can't we talk about that? Why does it have to be negative hypotheticals when it comes to the to Deontay Johnson and positive hypotheticals when it comes to everybody else just because people are trying to create a narrative to why we shouldn't pay Deontay Johnson? I think it's a lot of – I just – I don't get that. I if we're it, When I look at football, it's what is happening, what is going to happen. If we're looking at Deontay's next contract, I expect great things in the next four years because last year showed me that he can make that big jump. You know what I haven't seen from Deont- from Chase Claypool? A big jump. All I've seen is negative results. Took the words right out of my mouth. I think a lot of people in Pittsburgh, um, it, it's not an illusion because it, it's a very proven thing with the Steelers. that They do draft receivers very well. Um, they do develop them very well, but like you don't, and like I've said this, like Derek has said this on the Friday show, you said it a couple times, you don't draft a guy like Deontay Johnson to let him go and hope you find another Deontay Johnson. Is he Antonio yeah. Brown? No, Deontay Johnson is not Antonio Brown. No, but Deontay um, jo- Antonio Brown wasn't Antonio Brown when Antonio Brown signed his contract. Like, that's the thing. Antonio Brown was Emmanuel Sanders when he signed in his big contract. And then he became Antonio Brown. If we're looking at the Steelers wide receivers and you're looking at projections for the next four years outside of George Pickens, who's a rookie, so we have no idea, your best bet, who you feel best about, is easily Deontay Johnson. Easily Deontay Johnson. Like, right? Am I wrong there? (laughs) <laughs> no, nah, nah, just in terms of like Steelers receivers, yeah. It's I get I get the argument that there are wide receiver talent all over the place. I do get that argument. But at the same time, Deontay Johnson is going to get paid. Okay. It's not even if it's not in Pittsburgh, Deontay Johnson's going to get paid. High profile wide receivers get paid. Do you want to know why guys are making teams are making decisions to get rid of wide receivers? because they can't afford to pay them. The Pittsburgh Steelers have no salary cap issues for the next four years. None whatsoever. Why waste? Why, why get rid of talent to hope that you could rebuild talent and take a risk when you could just pay guys? You know what I'm saying? Like I, Not for sure. I, I see a couple of people in the comments bringing up the drops and I have harped on those drops. I think you know more than anybody because I think that's probably the number one issue you and I have gone back and forth on on this podcast about is Deontay Johnson's drops. Um, and then there's some more people in the comments talking about um, how, you know, Deontay hasn't necessarily, like, established a rapport with a quarterback who isn't a, like, Hall of Fame quarterback. Antonio Brown did have a big Ben Roethlisberger, this, just and that. I- I get the you drops. can make an argument that the drop. last couple years of Big Ben, thank you, was not great. No, it was bad. Was not great. It was bad. But guess who his best target was? Deontay Johnson. Every time, like he, Deontay Johnson was still great with a much less successful Ben Roethlisberger, and that had nothing to do with Big Ben. Nothing. That had a, a, to do with a lot of things. There was zero running game. You can't have a thirty-seven-year-old quarterback. Be your primary source of 
income when it comes to to an offense. You have to have a running game. There was never a running game. He had the worst offensive line in football for two years now. Like, if you're getting the ball out of your hands in .0 seconds pretty much, bad things are going to happen. On top of that, you want to talk about drops. People want to bring up drops. Antonio Brown was really good at being Antonio Brown. And Antonio Brown is the greatest Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver of all time. And it's it's a really tough argument to, to put Deont- Deontay Johnson in a case with Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown shined across the field. A lot of guys today in the NFL that are getting paid these big bucks are really good at what they do best. Deontay Johnson is one of the best route runners in football, and he is always open when he's working on the outside of the field. You want to know where his drops come? You want to know where his drop against Kansas City came from? In the middle of the field, where he doesn't execute well. Why is why do we know that? I know that sitting here. But the offensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers doesn't know that enough to not put him in that situation. That doesn't. It's not like Deontay Johnson doesn't get open on the outside, so you have to move him to the inside. Deontay Johnson's always open on the outside. So why did you move him to the inside where he has drop issues? And those drop issues are three drops. Three drops. It's not like it's a billion drop issues. The drop issues were solved. He had one timely drop. I just... I mean, there's a lot of factors in here, and the blame is by no means only on Deontay Johnson, but people just want to put it on Deontay Johnson as if he's the only issue. Like, he's going to get paid, and he's probably going to – like, look at it this way. What if he doesn't have a single drop this year? Not one. You want to talk about misfortunes. You want to talk about hypotheticals when it comes to the Steelers wide receivers, and I feel like I'm just going on a tangent here, but (laughs) – You want to talk about Chase Claypool because that's the big one is why pay Deontay Johnson when you George Pickens, Chase Claypool, and Calvin Austin. I get that. Chase Claypool makes a million mistakes a season. Last year, the dude was getting penalized once a game at least. He made a first down marker when you're driving and there's 30 seconds left to win a game. Dropping balls, mental errors. Looking Drops for flags balls. way too early. Never in the stays route, on not his using feet. his six foot four, six foot five frame. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of things that you could say about Chase Claypool to bring his stock way down, but people just want to talk about how good he can be. How good can Deontay Johnson be? We have no idea. This is your four. This is where the big explosive things happen. Things change. I think the allure of paying Deontay Johnson is whenever you look at having a stud receiving core of how good Deontay Johnson can possibly be, the potential of Chase Claypool and what you're banking on him to do in the next couple of years, and then George Pickens. If George Pickens is anything like the reports and what you've seen in minicamp this year, I mean, the Steelers are going to have like a, a phenomenal wide receiver trio. Wouldn't you want to yeah. keep that together for as long as possible? I don't think paying Deontay Johnson $20 million a year is going to break the bank at all. And like we've talked about time and time again, and somebody brought this up in the chat that you could probably find other receivers less for $20 million, which is true, yeah. certainly true. But at that, at certain points, those guys are going to want to get paid. And in a league where the salary cap continues to grow, yesterday's price is not today's price. The twenty million you are going to pay Deontay Johnson in two years will not be anything. Will not be anything, especially if he signs before DK, before Debo. Marquise Brown's probably going to get somewhere between twenty-two to twenty-three million dollars per year. You can easily say that Deontay Johnson is head and shoulders above Marquise Brown. Oh gosh, yeah, head and shoulders. Look. And you can always move that money around whenever it comes to the salary cap too. Like you, like you, you are not stuck. Yeah only paying him that salary every single year you could maneuver that money around i my my big thing is the steelers have a number and we 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 know the steelers have a number they're not gonna oh, we talked sure. about it a billion times they're not gonna go over the number you know whatever that number is that's where they value deontay johnson the rest of it is all just talk all of it but i don't i don't like the negative narrative around deontay johnson which, you know, which happens on every fan base. You know what I mean? Like, no, by the sure. end of a player's time and a franchise, he's usually hated. That sucks. You know, they're, they're not looked at at people by the time it's over. They're just looked at as names. 
I understand that's the price you pay when you're getting paid millions of dollars to be a professional athlete. I feel as if Deontay's hit early, as if there was this false narrative created where Deontay Johnson wants to get paid a billion dollars when he's never said that one time. And everyone now thinks they have to push the argument that he should not make any money whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if they want to wait, a, if everybody wants to wait a year, that's fine. If the Steelers want to wait a, weird, a year, that's fine. You know, if the if the end goal is to just see how good this season goes and see if Chase Claypool does put up 1,300 yards and a dozen touchdowns, and that's the guy that you gotta that you gotta pay, then that's fine. But if he doesn't do that in one year from now, if I'm Deontay Johnson, I want nothing to do with the Pittsburgh Steelers because half of the fan base has already told me to get out. And that's aggressive, you know? Like, I, I just feel as if it's it's created such a strong storyline that it's it's getting rough, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's getting it's getting rough. I feel almost... Now, if if, if you're defend. talking about paying multiple wide receivers, that usually means that you have a pretty good receiving core on your hands, which is typically a good problem to have. Um, somebody, I, I think it was Dark Storm who brought up earlier in the chat that sure, Deontay's going to get paid, but like, is he worth top 10 receiver money? No, Probably but, not. Is, is, no. is, is he a top 10 receiver? No, no, and I wouldn't say he's a top 10 receiver right now, but let's get it's that. kind of the price you pay in hopes of him kind of turning into it. Like, yeah. you, if you look across the league, I like his potential to turn into a top 10 guy more than Marquise Brown, more than Christian Kirk, more than a lot of these, these other guys who got paid. I like him better than Mike Williams. He's just got $20 million a year. That's a, that's exactly it. it. If you pay him $20 million a year, like it might seem like a high number, but in a year from now, he'll probably be like the 15th highest paid receiver in the NFL. And in two years from now, he'll be the 20th highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. And that's what you have to base this off of. It's not now. It's what is it going to be in three years? Look, because it, it, it's just the future. And I, I think one thing people need to remember them signing Deontay Johnson to like a 20 or like $22 million deal per like season, whatever you want to call it. That is not going to stop the Steelers from being flexible to salary cap. That is not going to prevent right. them from being a great football team. Several other factors will play into that. Deontay Johnson getting $20 million per year is not going to impact that at all. No, no. And look, at and I get the narrative that, you know, waiting and seeing what Chase Claypool turns into because you're not sure. going to be able to sign them both. That's fine. If you want to do that, that's fine. But if, if it turns out to be Deontay Johnson's the answer and Chase Claypool is not, do not expect Deontay Johnson to be an easy signing next offseason. Yep. Expect him to hit that out because once he hits that open market – there are going to be teams calling, looking to pay a lot of money, way more money than the Steelers are going to want to pay. And that's the risk that you're going to play this season, not signing him. And then if mm -hmm. it goes into next year and it's 2023 and Chase Claypool is not that guy, which there's just as good of a shot that Chase Claypool is not that guy because Chase Claypool's issues are more fundamental than anything else. Deontay Johnson was in his head. The drops were rough. They were real mental. That's why he got benched in Buffalo. Chase Claypool doesn't know how to catch a football. He catches with his body. He's been catching with his body his entire his entire career. He doesn't stay on his feet. It's a lot of fundamental things. Those are tougher to change. If it if it doesn't turn out, the Steelers are going to take a gamble and they're going to walk away with Calvin Austin and George Pickens being their one and two and hoping that they can find somebody. And that that's fine. You know, that's a good one and two. It's a risk that they don't find a three, though. It's a risk that Calvin Austin, Austin doesn't turn into a two. That's like that's a lot of ifs. It's a lot of question marks for especially for a team that's ready. You know, that's the big thing. The Steelers don't want to rebuild ever. They just, you know, they, they don't want to get stuck in that. And I think that there's a there's a possibility they do if they take that risk. All right. Let's move on. We've talked a lot about Deontay Johnson. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh me and Mostel's got into it a little bit, and I I apologize no, that no. I, I respect your opinion, man. I, I really, 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 really do. Trust me. 